Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing some stamping foam life hacks and some ways to use the stamping foam you might not have thought of before. We're going to be playing around and experimenting with new techniques, so I hope you enjoy the video. Now if you guys have seen me use the stamping foam before, I like to take the stamping foam block and add a little bit of painter's tape on the back. I found this was the perfect adhesive that wasn't too sticky but will hold on. And then I use an acrylic block to add it to the back and this is going to make stamping a lot easier to get a nice even a pressure across the back because it's on a solid surface like this. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to show how to take any slimline products and turn them into normal A2 size. So I'm going to heat up the stamping foam for about 10 to 15 seconds here, make sure it's nice and hot, and then immediately I'm going to take the stamping foam and press it as fast as I can into the texture that I want. Here I'm using the Bold Blossoms background stamp, which is a slimline stamp, and then there we have all that beautiful texture. And you'll see just because it goes off the edge, the size of the stamping foam is A2, so it's going to turn it to make it to work perfectly on an A2 size card. Now this next part was a bit of an experiment for me, but I've been loving these tonic watercolor powders and I wanted to test them out to see how they would work on the stamping foam. So all you do is really lightly tap a lot of powder onto the surface, a little bit goes a long way, and then you spray it down with water to kind of get it to react. Now the more water you spray, the more it's going to kind of move and make it less able to see the design. So first here, you'll see that I left this down on the surface as I was stamping. I wanted some of the water to kind of sink into the cardstock before I pulled it off. And when I lifted it off, you can see some of that texture, but it really just turns into a beautiful watercolor background as well. For this next impression, I used any of the excess ink that was still on the surface there, pressed it down onto another piece, and I love that you get two different prints out of this one inking. Now this gave me a lot more texture since there was less water, and I also love that kind of watercolor marbled look that you really can't get with an ink pad. So now again, we're kind of experimenting a little bit more here, and I wanted to bring back some of the detail. So I brought in a pigment black ink pad, and I'm just going to lightly swipe it over top of the same image on the stamping foam, which is going to just kind of hit all of those detailed areas with the black ink. Then I'm going to line it up with the bottom edge, it's pretty easy since it's just a rectangle, and stamp it down over top of the background. This is going to kind of bring back some of the detail and highlight the color there. And since it's pigment ink, I threw over a layer of clear embossing powder. I am obsessed with clear embossing powder because once you heat it up, I think it really intensifies the black color and also brings out a lot of the colors on the background there. So I love how this one turned out. Then I'm going to take the rectangle blend stencil and I'm going to place it over top of this. It actually fits perfectly over top of any stamping foam shaped background, which is so awesome because then I can go in and do some blending. I wanted to add a little bit more color to the background, almost like the Joseph's coat technique where you can kind of see the color underneath. So I went back in with the same exact ink pad colors and really lightly kind of blended them over top. I didn't want super harsh color, but I wanted just a little hazing of color to fill in some of that white area and make it not as harsh. I love how easy this rectangle blend stencil masks off the edge, but of course you could always tape it off if you want to. Then when I lift it off, you'll see that perfect white crisp edge, and I love how this background turned out. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of that Joseph's coat technique. I just love the beautiful contrast. So I'm going to talk about cleaning here since everyone always asks about it. To clean off this pigment ink, I just sprayed it with water and I cleaned it off really easily. You could also go in with a harsher cleaner like a stamp cleaner if you've got a little bit of tricky ink, but if it stains, it's not going to be too big of a deal. To finish off the other backgrounds, I'm going to use the Bold Blossoms Peel Apart Background Stamp, and I love that these little flowers peel apart out of this background so that we can use them individually on today's card that we're stamping. And of course you can puzzle them back in and stamp the whole background too. So then I'm going to use that same black ink and stamp it down onto my card. And again, I'm going to throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder to intensify the black and make it stand out. Then I'm going to heat set that and you'll see that it turns nice and clear and shiny. Whenever I do any sort of kind of watercolor, I like to heat emboss to make sure that the lines don't get kind of covered up with any sort of color that goes on top. So we're using the watercolor powders again. I absolutely love how these turn out and it's a super quick coloring method. So I'm going to go in and this time I'm kind of concentrating the color. So I added yellow everywhere, but then when it comes to the pink and red color, I'm going to just lightly tap those and kind of concentrate them onto the flower areas. And again, don't squeeze these bottles, just light taps on the backside is going to give all of the pigment powder you need. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's going to burst and create a beautiful color. 
So I'll go in and spray these down. You can spray more or less depending on how concentrated color you want, but I just love how they kind of burst out and give us that beautiful vibrancy on our background. And again, super easy to color in with these. So then I'm going to go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors and just quickly fussy cut these out. I like to leave a little bit of a border so it's a bit easier, but these scissors make it super easy to get into the small details and also they spring back out at you so your hands won't get tired. Now to cut down this background, I like this guillotine trimmer and if you stamped anything crooked, I just wanted to show you guys to kind of line the inked edge up with the edge of the trimmer and it'll be all straight and easy then. I added everything down onto the card to finish it off and just added a quick sentiment. Again, I love how this kind of marbled background turned out and how these flowers were super easy to color in with those watercolor powders. Now to kind of remold the foam, it's reusable. So all you need to do is just heat set it again for about 10 to 15 seconds and the design will kind of disappear and raise back to the surface and then it's flat and ready to use on another project. Here I used it on this scrapbook.com floral die. Again, it's a slimline design that we're turning into an A2 size card design. I love how these dies look too, because it gives a nice thin line design, which is just beautiful. So now I'm going to take any of my inks, and this is a great hack for kind of coloring in. I like to use blending tools to color in to get into finer details on my stamping foam. Here I use mini ink blending tools to just quickly kind of segment out some of these flower areas. I started off with kind of a pink color, and then I went in with another blending tool right in the center and added a darker red color. I'm going to do this with all three of these colors here, segmenting off the florals but then also shading them in with a darker shade of the same color. Here I used two different shades of orange, and then I'm going to finish it off with some purple down in the corner. Being able to go in with these blending tools to segment off different areas, and you can also use even smaller blending tools, is really great to get into some of the finer detail and really color in images. Then I'm going to spray it down with a light mist of water from a distance. This is just going to kind of react to the ink a little bit, but not make it too much where it's a little bit messy, and that gives a beautiful stamped impression. I love the different shading that we were able to do, and also how we were able to segment off the different flowers just using our blending tools and not the ink pads themselves. To finish off this card, I went in with a sentiment that says, I adore you from the Sketch Floral stamp set, and then again, I heat embossed that one to make the black really pop and stand out off my card. I kept this one super simple by putting it all together, but I just wanted to really highlight that background. I loved how those different colored florals turned out with the shading in the centers. Next, I'm going to show a really beautiful two-tone stamping effect using a 3D embossing folder. I saw this one first from Jennifer McGuire, and it's so awesome. So I'm going to use the raised side of the 3D embossing folder, and these folders have different types of heights in them, so different depths or dimension. I'm going to then heat up my stamping foam for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then press it really firmly down into that embossing folder. That's going to create a really awesome impression in there, and again, there's different heights and depths to it. Because of this, I'm going to take the first ink pad, which is going to be my lightest tone or color, and I'm going to really press it down into the stamping foam. You want to get it into all those little grooves and details that it created with the embossing folder. Then I'm going in with a second color that's a little bit darker. Here I use triple berry, which is another purple, and I'm just going to lightly go over top to just hit all the details. This is going to create a beautiful two-toned look. I'm going to spray it down, stamp it down onto my cardstock, and you guys can kind of see that beautiful effect of that lighter color down in there and that darker color raised on the top surface. So beautiful. So I did it again with some different color combos, and I wanted to really kind of explain it. So here I use reds, so I'm going to go in with a little bit of a light pink for the first color. Then I'll use a red for the mid-tone color, kind of pressing a medium amount, and then finally, last but not least, pressing the tiniest little bit using a bit of game over to really add depth and dimension to this. Then when you stamp it down, you really want to give lots of pressure because you want all those depressed areas to still stamp. So you still want to apply tons of pressure even when you're stamping too. So that turned out beautifully, but now I wanted to create an even more contrasting background. Here I went in with a little bit of Shooting Star, which is a super bright yellow color. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit of Love Struck. This is kind of a mid-tone red color, and I'm just hitting the top areas again with this color. Now some of you might be a little bit concerned about your ink pads, but you can always wipe it off to the side on a paper towel, and once it returns back to that red color, you're perfectly fine. I just wouldn't go in with a yellow on top of a red, that would be pretty bad. 
So here we have that beautiful background, and you can see that really awesome contrast, but I love how beautiful these two-tone backgrounds are once you're all finished. Now I also wanted to mention you can go in with any household items. Here I went in with a little bit of a rope background, and since it was deep enough, I had to just impress the color in, and you can still get that beautiful two-toned effect. Now for this last technique, we're going in with the heart cut stamping foam. This is new, but I love this beautiful heart shape, and also you could use the frames too to stamp down with the stamping foam. Now I'm going to do the same thing by adding it down onto an acrylic block to make stamping easier. And then I'm going to go in with this background stamp called Lovely Lilies. Now I'm going to peel apart half of the background stamp. It has this beautiful peel apart where you can either use both sides or it all together. And then I'm going to heat that stamping foam up and press it right down into the Lovely Lilies background. I love that with this heart cut stamping foam, you can make any impression into the foam and have it be a heart shape like this. Just beautiful. Now I'm going to do some heat embossing, so I'm going to use my antiseptic powder tool, and lots of you have been asking if you can use this with Versamark ink. So I'm going to lightly press down the Versamark ink, being careful not to get into all those little details, and then I'm going to stamp it down onto some brown cardstock. Give it some good pressure, and when I lift it off, you can see that Versamark gave a nice impression. Then I'm going to put a little bit of like champagne embossing powder over top, tap that off, and then when we heat it up here, you'll see just that beautiful amount of shine that we get from this. And I love that we were able to use the stamping foam to create this impression. You could even do a whole background with a bunch of colored embossed powders. It's just super cool to get all that beautiful gold shine. And then I added down a sentiment to finish off. It was super simple, but again, this gold shine and the stamping foam is a quick and easy way to make an easy card. Now I'm going to just show you guys, you can heat set this again, and it'll do the exact same thing as the other stamping foam, going back to normal so you can reuse it over and over again. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite. I always love chatting with you guys down there. And also there's a full supplies list linked in the description box, and those links really help support me, so I appreciate you guys using them. Thanks so much for spending time with me, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!